Hey guys, Piggy Pop here in the comic room. It's great to see you guys. Great. I just want to say hi to Hawkman. Hawkman, thanks for being you. You. All right. That's all. Just quick say hi to you. At least once a week, I like to say hi to Hawkman. Guys, thanks for joining me, man. Man, I was on the hunt. I was hunting for comics all over the place. Hold on. Where, let me get that. I was big game hunt. Big game hunt. I was big time safari hunting for comics, man. The Serengeti. Nothing. I was all over the place. And I found some comics. I wouldn't say the Serengeti. I'd say the Connecticut shoreline, you know? I would say in a five-mile radius of my house. I don't like to leave too far away. So, anyways, but it was fun. And I found some fun things. Let me start with my weekly poll. I went to, I went to a couple LCSs. But for my weekly poll, I go down the street to Second Alarm Comics. Not First Alarm, Second Alarm. I walk in there, I you know... I'm like, let me see that baby, man. Oh, that's a beauty. I'm shaking hands. And I was like, no, no, I'm not going to run for mayor this year. No, no, thanks, guys. I'm just here for comics. And um, But this week, it's fun. Watch this. See how smart? I'm so smart. And another thing. I got a package in the mail. Ooh, a package in the mail. Uh, uh. And don't worry, Hawk Woman, she's not going to be mad because it was, this thing was real cheap. I'm talking six bucks. I mean, I'm talking cheap. Anyways, Dawn of DC, Superman, The Chained, Part 1. This story is getting real good. All right? Now, uh, I don't know. You should read it. But Lex Luthor got shivved in prison the last uh, issue. All right? So now he's in a coma. So Superman takes a, a fly, he flies over to the, the Lex Corps where Superman's supposed to be, I don't know, he's, he's supposed to be running Lex Corps now and all that stuff, and he talks to uh, Lex's uh, woman there, I forgot her name, and uh, she says, there's something that Lex buried in the, in the earth, like uh, uh, two miles below Lex Corps, and it's in like a, a, a cage that only Lex c could figure out how to get it, it someone's in there. And he's like, and Superman's like, I want to know who's prisoner in there. It's been a prisoner for like like 30 years and this and that. And she says, I don't know. If Lex put him in there, he shouldn't come out. But Superman's like, I got to go see. So he goes, he drills down there. You know how Superman turns into a drill. He's like, Rrr. he drills down there. And uh, he frees the person. And the guy goes crazy. He beats up Superman. And then he's like, I'm going to go take over Metropolis and kill everyone. See you later. And Superman's like, whoops. So, oh, not only that, but Superman is Superman is now in the prison. And what the prison does, it uses your own powers to keep you a prisoner. Okay, now there's Lex's uh, girl. I forgot her name. Uh, you know her name. You know who I'm talking about. And here's Lex in a coma. Beep, beep, beep. You know, so that's what's going on. But then, so let me show you. Let me show you what's going on. And don't forget Justice League versus Godzilla. That's coming soon. Okay, now check this out. I'll show you quick. Spoiler alert! Okay. Now, they go down. They go down. Superman drills down there. Right? And, um... Yeah, see how he's a drill? He's like... And, um... Uses the heat vision. And there's the cage, all chained up. And, uh... All the chains and everything. He's like, what the heck is in there? So then, so, and he sees a guy. The guy's like, oh, help me. So Superman's like, all right, man. Stay, you know, chill out. I'll free you. Then this is what the guy looks like. You know, looks like me after I've been fasting for about three months. And um, so then Superman's like, uh, the, guy, the guy whips a chain and hits the chick. And the sends her flying. So super, and he goes to throw a chain at Superman. Superman sh stops the chain. He's like, crunch. And then Superman shoots his heat vision at him. And all of a sudden, the heat vision stops. It's like, beep. It's like, uh, no, no, sir, Superman. You can't do that to me. And then it's on. The guy sends the earth all surrounding Superman. And then he crunches Superman. And then 
He sends all the chains to wrap around Superman, and now Superman's like, uh-oh. And the guy's like, um, it's been so long. I'll see you later. And he just flies away. And he's like, la da dee la da 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 la da 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 He's like, what a beautiful day to take a walk in the Central Park of Metropolis. So, that's what's going on in Superman. Guys, awesome. And I picked up World's Finest, issue number 19. It was pretty good. I mean, they wrapped up a story real quick. Um, a rogue Kryptonian that was in the Phantom Zone was using mind uh, powers over the Riddler. Ba ba ba. Then they find the guy. The guy comes out of the Phantom Zone at will and attacks Superman. And then they, they you know, they team up and they go. It's not one of the best of the world's finest by Wade, but it's still awesome. Get it? And then. I, I treated myself, I'm going out of my comfort zone, and I got Wonder Woman, issue number one, by Tom King, and it is really good. You know why? You want to know why? Because they brought a guy back from Charlton Comics. Charlton, Charlton, we're doing the Charlton. Sarge Steele. Sarge Steele is in this, and he's working for the government to get all the rogue Amazons out He's like, are you on Amazon? Now go on, get. Yeah, so uh, he's like, uh, go on, get. That's what I said to my roofer. My roofer, this guy, I didn't like him right, right off the get, right? And he, all of a sudden, my wife tells me, and look at, feast your eyes on this. Feast. Feast your eyes. It's cool. Good stuff. The roofer, uh, apparently, he, I never met him the whole time. And then my wife's like, this guy's a creeper. I said, I'll handle this. The last day he was working on that, I, I went over there and I, I said, I had the check in my hand. He's like, hey, how are you? He's just a BS artist, this guy. I said, listen. He goes, oh, I never met you before. I said, that's it. Get your roofers and get your dumpster and get, here's your money. I said, get your shine box and get. This is great. This is the Green Lantern, issue number one. This is called War Journal. It's about Jon Stewart, and it's very good. I wasn't too sure about it, but uh, but it got to me. It really did. It, um, uh, you know, it, it's just really good. This reminds me, I was reading it, and Jon Stewart's staying at his mom's house, all right? And he, but he all, all he's doing, he's staying at his mom's, and he's working, doing, doing yard work and stuff. But it starts off, there's a mission in space. Something goes bad, bad wrong. And there's a, a, a rogue uh, lantern ring that comes flying in. It's kind of purplish and blackish. And it, and it takes over a, a, a woman astronaut. And then bad things are happening. And um, John Stewart's down home. He's doing yard work. And, it, and I can see, and his mom, is, this is his mom. Right, nice old lady, and he's he's talking to her. She's telling stories. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, and thinking to himself, I heard this one before. But it turns out, his mom has uh, like, uh, like dementia and Alzheimer's, so she keeps telling him this thing. And I, I relate. I, I'm going. To, I just, it just really hit home, man. You know, it's just because I deal with the same thing with my mother, and she tells me a story like a hundred. I'm like, and I, I'm like, tell it again. I'm into it, ma. You know. That's where I come back. That's where I just got back from my mom's. I, after work, every day, I go to my mom's, hang out, make sure the house isn't burning down. And, you know, she talks and she's got the dementia real bad, you know. And the thing is, you got to get, you got to get prepared for, you got to get prepared to be sad. Because it's sad. Because she's not with it. And it just makes you sad. That's all. So he's going through his, he, and, but then this lantern comes down. And he's he also he she's the mother's like oh when's uh he's talking about his daughter so a little girl she's coming over to this and that and, and he's like she's not even around she's an adult you know but he pretends he makes a uh, he makes a, a, a con construct of a girl that comes home from school every day and she's like oh here she is and they sit down and eat you know it's like it's really sad stuff with his mom but then this lantern comes down and says we there's not supposed to be any lanterns on earth. And we know there's a lantern here. And he's like, hand over your ring or I'm going to kill you. This guy here. I'll show you. And he's like, I don't have a ring. This guy here. 
he thinks he's bad. He's all threatening, Stuart. And then he's like, well, it, it, it says here there's a ring. Here. There's a green power. Here. There's light power here. And John can, doesn't need a ring anymore. He just gets all crazy, and he sends, he punched the guy over the, over the moon. And that's cool, man. So now there's also this guy here. It ends. See, there's the, there's the mother with the construct of the girl. So he beats that guy's butt. And then there's this other lantern they introduce at the end. And uh, he's fighting that crazy lantern from the beginning. So it looks really good, man. Really good. So this is issue number one. Justice League versus Godzilla and King Kong. So. So, you know, that's why I love you guys. You guys give me, uh, what does Mickey say? The motivation. Yes, the, motiv the motivation, kid. Hold on. We'll do a little Mickey. See, you got to have purpose. I can't stay sad, so I, I like to see you guys, and I have a little motivation. Hey, kid. Hey, slip the jab. Slip the jab. Slip the jab. That's it, Rock. You're looking good, kid. You're looking good. Oh, yeah. I didn't hear no bell, Rock. All right. All right. You're looking good. That's it, Rock. You're looking good. Real good, kid. Yeah, I tell you, kid. If it wasn't for you, I don't even think I'd be here, kid. You give me that, uh, what's it called? Motivation. If you weren't here doing as good as you're doing, kid, and I wouldn't have purpose, you know? And, uh, you know, Mother Nature is smarter than people think, you know? And, uh, here, I got a gift for you, kid. Hey, yo, Mick, I don't need no gift. Hey, wait a minute now. I got a gift for you. This here is Rocky Marciano's cufflink. And I want you to have it, kid. Oh, wow, Mick, thank you. And listen, when you're down, when you're down and you're on the ground, kid, this is going to be like a little angel whispering in your ear. Get up, you son of a bitch! Cause Mickey loves ya! I love you too, Mick. Hey, that's right, kid. Hey, what happened to the other cufflink? Ah, he must have given it to some bum. Hey. That's Mickey. Mickey! So, you guys are my motivation. And so then, I was at Second Alarm. That's my weekly poll. And I'm very excited. I read them all. Very good. Right? That's all. And I found... Now, this is for my friend Ron Foss. Aquaman nut. He, I, I saw... I didn't have a lot of scratch on me because it, the roofer took all my money. But he had a bunch of Volume 1 Aquamans. All right? And this is Aquaman issue number 49. Awesome story. And uh, Jim Apparel and... Um, Nick Cardi's on the cover. Jim Apparel does all the art inside. Does a great job. Great job. And um, February of 1970. And, uh, and um, it's cool, man. So anyways, Second Alarm Comics has about, I would say, a half dozen more of these. 51. Um, all the way up to issue like 53 down to like 47. They're, they're, they're scattered. And... Eventually, I'm going to get them all for my friend Ron Foss, and we'll go over some Aquaman soon. Because I have a lot of these, but these were in pretty darn good shape. These are real good, man. Real nice. Real nice. And uh, it's cool. It's nice. Great cover. And they had to, um, the one issue, they was either going to get this one, or I was going to get the one sinking of uh, California. Here's Aqualad. He calls him Little Minnow. And, uh... Yeah, so they're following this rogue scuba diver that's going around dynamiting and blowing up uh, things. And they're talking to this professor guy. He has a he had, oh he has a pipe. I got a pipe. Where's my pipe? Sure, professor. Yes, yeah, Aquaman. Yes, I'm glad you're here. You see, um, so and uh, it's cool. Good art. And we got Aqua Male. Someone wrote a letter and said they didn't like Aqua Girl's hairdo. And then the editor says, I agree. I don't like a hairdo either. I'm going to tell him. So, I got that. Nice book. Great cover. I give this a grade of... So then, two days ago, I was on the hunt. 
I was on the hunt. I was hunt. I was getting it done. I was like, <clears throat> I'm gonna hunt me some comic books. And, you know, and people give me crap. You know, they're like, what are you doing, man? Collecting comic books. I was like, yeah, yo, I don't sing and dance, so I gotta collect comic books. So I was at DJ's Cars and Comics, and it's funny because I every time I go there, I get deep into the boxes. I'm in there. I know what's in that store more than the people that work there. It's true. And so I come up there with this. I go, I got this. He goes, where'd you find that? I says, it was over there underneath all those boxes. And it's got eaten by some rats. Rats. Not the band rat. Round and round. Not that rat. So this is Superboy issue number 145. Son, I can't believe what I see in the mirror. You must change us back to normal. How can I tell mom and dad that the change is permanent? They're looking in the mirror. Who knows what they look like? Bum, bum, bum. And yes, readers, from this day on, Superboy's parents will live with the fantastic faces. And uh, this is March of 68. And uh, this is a Neil Adams van. So when I saw this, I was like, I don't care if a rat took a poopy on it. I'm taking it home. And uh, he gave it to me. So, uh, and um, George Papp does the art inside. Otto Binder is the writer. Otto Binder does the writing on the second story. It's uh, Superboy meets William Tell. Very nice. So, it's a classic. And I didn't have this one. I had issue 144 and issue 146. And guess what? I didn't have 145. But now I do. Soon, we'll be going over Superboy. And Superboy's new adventures. And let's see. Yeah, man. Because uh, Aquaman's great. I'm glad I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start working on that. And then um, I found this. I don't think... I actually had this... I, I got this a couple weeks ago, but I, I think I forgot to show you guys. If I already showed you, that means I'm a moron. This is Flash, issue number 138. You got Ralph Digby and the Piper there. And the second story is uh, Kid Flash, which I love the way they draw Kid Flash. It's, it's just great art, man. This is August of 63. And um, higher ever, higher, twists the elongated man. Faster ever, faster speeds the Flash on an invisible treadmill. Is there any escape from the Pied Piper's double, double doom? Classic Pied Piper. And it's in pretty good shape, man. One of the, uh, like, the center pages kind of lift up a little bit, but, hey, oh, none of us are perfect. Let me show you Kid Flash real quick. Kid Flash. Beep, beep, beep. Awesome. Oh, and I've been reading um, the comics I got from Harvey's, the uh, Flash Rebirth, one through six. Such a great story, man. Oh, my God, I can't believe I missed that one. I'm reading it now. That's the good thing about comics, people. You can always go back and read your comics because they make you smart. All right. Moving right along. And then I found this, the Forever People. I didn't have this one. This is issue number six. We should go over to Forever People someday. Ah, forever and ever and ever we go in it. And this is um, December of 71. Kirby is the man. And there's a Sandman story in here, which is awesome. Classic Sandman with the, uh, wearing the tights, not, not the mask. And it's great. It's great. So this is a classic. And uh, there's Big Bear. There you go. I love the Forever People, man. Just great characters. They're just fun, loving kids, man. So we'll go over to Forever People someday. I got a couple, uh, volume one, obviously, volume, I need another, one more issue of Forever People, volume one, and you're going to love this, I love it, Lois, L Superman's Girlfriend, Lois Lane, issue number 83, wah, wah, wah. and um, Neil Adams on the cover, so, this is in great shape, and Neil Adams on the cover, and he wanted some money for it. Not a lot, but I got this for uh, $12, all right? That's, that's, that's high end for Higgy, all right? But I need, I love it, I love it. And um, um, there's a motorcycle gang with some jerk leader, uh, Kaiser Bill or something. 
and uh, he's the leader of the maniacs. Wah, 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 right, and um, and then Clark Kent gets bullied by the guy because he never sticks up for himself. Clark, you know, all of a sudden he has a wastebasket on his head. Like, like Clark, please, you're embarrassing the mankind. And uh, so, but Lois joins, gets a motorcycle and starts attacking Maniac's motorcycle group. And yeah, you know, it's great. And uh, Irv Novik does all the uh, pencils inside. What have I done? I've forced Lois to ride with a cycle gang, and I've made Clark Kent quit his chicken posse. What a maroon! What a ninkow poop! But there you go. There's Clark on his bike. Neil Adams, take it all in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. All right. And for all you Marvel lovers, I'm a Marvel lover. And Avengers issue number 56. And um, this is uh, this is September of 68. Is this issue 50? 56. And they're going against, they're fighting Zemo in this. And, uh, yeah, Bucky's, uh, you know, you know, I think he hit the liquor cabinet. He's having, he had a rough night. It says, death, be not proud. There's Captain Gong. Why? And, uh, Roy Thomas is a writer. And John Bashuma on art. Classic baby. And, uh, slowly, slow and steady wins the race. I'm getting my Avengers, you know. And this is, I give this a grade of, uh, whoa, big plus, big plus, all right? It's just a little rough, you know? It's, it's well-loved, all right? Let's put it that way. I'll, you know what? I'll give it a woof. And here we go, Higgy, here we go. I've been looking for this for a long time, and there's always been big prices on it, big prices. But I got this one, and it's a little faded, but it's in perfect shape. Detective Comics, issue number 445. Because it, one of the why I got it? Because it has a Dr. Midnight. Dr. Midnight! Bit Dr. Midnight story. All right? And it's awesome. And there's also, there's Roy Raymond, Elongated Man, Robin, Dr. Midnight, and Star Hawkins. I love Star Hawkins. And there's Dr. Midnight. So I've been wanting to get this. I see prices from like $40. To, to, oh my god, the place I went to last week had $80 on this. I'm like, why? And uh, so anyways, this is a Dr. Midnight story from Golden Age. It's like from 1948 in there. But it's great, man. I love it. And um, Mike Grell does the art and uh, for the Robin story. It's awesome. And uh, there he is, the Bat Murderer. Take him dead or alive. That's what Commissioner Gordon's saying. So... It's a hundred pager. Dr. Midnight. I'll show you Dr. Midnight. All right, guys. Yeah, big fatty. And it's in great shape. It's, as you can see, it's just like a little faded. Marty Moran. Star Hawkins. Manhunters. Okay. Elongated man. Elongated man. And 24 hour death. Dr. Midnight. Yes, sir. He's out there knocking people out with his blackout bombs. He says, I'll follow as Dr. Midnight. He gets he gets clubbed over the back of the head. Well, he is blind. But he, he look at it. Pop. Yes, sir. And this is Mike Grell art doing the Robin story. That's awesome. Good stuff, baby. I think Mike Grell does this. Mike Grell. Indeed. Great art. All right, man. So now, Sonia, where is she? Where is she? Sonia, where are you, kid? 
I got a package in the mail. Sonia, whoa, whoa. Would you put some clothes on? Would you just get out of the shower? Look away, man, man. If Hawk Girl sees me, thank you for the sword. All right, close, put some clothes on. Don't you have a, uh, with your therapist? All right. How's that going, by the way? Good? You didn't kill anyone lately. All right. Stay away from the old, uh, okay, kid. Thank you for my, so thank you for my letter opener. Where's my package? Yeah. Yeah, so the roofer was trying to make, make uh, googly eyes with, with a hawk woman. I was like, listen, we are reincarnated long lost lovers. She's mine, dude. Mow your own lawn, freak. So anyways, that package? Yeah. Got this? All right. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, I better be careful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, death blow. Death blow. All right. Okay. Here you go, son. Here you go, kid. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you're at least wearing a towel. Lord. Ow. Yes. Beowulf, Dragon Slayer, issue number six. All right. We're going to go over Beowulf. It's a six issue miniseries from 1975 into 76. Let's start. I got them up. Where are they? Where did I put? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. What we do is we start with issue number one. I, listen, I had been trying to find issue number six in the wild, in the wilds, for years. And I'm just tired of it. Same old boxes I go through. Nothing new is coming into Connecticut. So that's it. I had to take things into my own hands. I asked Hawk Woman, I said, I need to get something in the mail. Six dollars. Can we swing it? She said, I guess. So, so what I did was I, I tried to sell another kidney. The doctor says, you would need... He sat me down. He said, Higgy, did you get kicked in the head by yours? You need one kidney. I can't take them all. I said, oh, who to thunk? So, Beowulf the Dragon Slayer came out in 75. This, one, this is issue number one, May of 75, all right? And this, um, this artist is Ricardo Velamonte. He's from Peru, and... He did, this is issue number one, he did the cover, the inside art, the inks, everything. And um, just look at that, man. Look at the mace he's swinging. Look at that art. Yes. I just love it, man. He does uh, the art through all of them. He, uh, Dear G Giordano does one of the covers eventually. And someone does the art in on the inside. Um, Estrada does the art on the inside in one of the last issues, but this um this uh, Ricardo Belamonte he uh, he was known for doing um remember Chris Star Chris Chris Star it was like a TV show or something or a toy he did that comic series for Marvel and he also did Kazar but pretty much I, I, that's all I know that he did and uh, what happens is. This is called The Curse of uh, Castle Holgarth. And Castle Holgarth is... All the guys are in there partying, being merry, and making noise. And then Grendel, the demon from the swamp, who was Satan made Grendel, he's like, he doesn't like all the noise, so he's headed to the castle to kill everybody. And uh, Beowulf is, is away with his guys. They're, he's out fighting somewhere, destroying some people. And um, so then word gets to him, so now he wants to head back to... to uh, Hogarth Castle and save everybody. So that's that's his mission now. All right, and um, he's got to go back from where he is fighting. They never say where he is. He has to go that back to Daneland to Hogarth Castle to kill Grendel, who's a bad, ugly monster. And um, it's cool. So here's issue. I got to rebag and board all these so they're out of the bags. Here's issue number two. Tijuana Wood and um, Villamonte do this cover here. This is in a little bit rougher shape, I'd say. I like the sword, though. Look at the sword. And uh, that's a sh that's a shape uh, shapeshifter, uh, like um, uh, and um, so him and his guys. Oh, there's also you know what's going on in this. There's a uh, there's something cool that happens in this. There's a uh, there's a spell being cast on him, and this 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 woman tells uh, does a spell. And it's, um, it's, 
it says something like blah 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 but what it really is it's tennis anyone spelt backwards let me see if i can find it look at, look at this art Look at this helmet. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, so the spell that's cast on him is tennis, anyone? Spelled backwards. Here it is. She says, Inoyana? Sinet. Right there. Tennis, anyone? That's a hell of a spell. That's a Zantana style. And she summons all these troll demons to attack. So they didn't even get to the castle yet. They're on their way. Look who's smiling now. Hey. The guy's licking his eyebrows. And, uh, so, bum, 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 bum. that's Grendel. His buddies are Wiglaf, Hondis, Hondisio. And, uh, the, in this book, in issue number two, the narrator says, Beowulf. With his blonde hair. Meanwhile, he has red hair. A little typo. That's the last page. That's issue number two. Beowulf. It was a very fun series. Very fun. I got two copies of issue number two. And issue number three. You've all seen this out there. I, this is the one I come across out in the wild all the time. I'm like, I already have three. That's the snake I found in my uh, in the hawk's nest. That then when I when I woke up in my in my own uh, puddle of urine, this is what it was doing. It was going, <sighs> but I took care of it. I dispatched it, as they say, with my safari hat. Nancy, that's this chick right here. She's the tough one, and he's just like he's like, I got it, I got it. Don't worry. What we need is a rat to feed him. And they're still trying to get there. They're fighting sea serpents and everything, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, ba ba ba, hacking away, hacking away, trying to get to Hogarth Castle to fight Grendel. Great art, right? This one was September of 75. Issue number four. November of 75. Beowulf meets Dracula. So Satan is behind all this, sending all these things at Beowulf. Grendel, Dracula, serpents, demons, all this stuff. She... There's Nancy flying off the horse. There's Beowulf just whipping a chain. He's a toughie. He's a tough dude. That's Grendel up there, by the way. And there's a Shazam with cupcakes ad. Twinkies, Twinkies. Yeah, look at that. Look at that helmet. Look at that helmet with the wings. I need one of those. There's Beowulf's helmet. All right, I got a new mission. I got to make a helmet. That is Grendel. That's a good picture of Grendel right there. Yes. So, there he is. Look at him. So this is issue number four. I have a little situation up here. So I will give this a grade up oof. It doesn't deserve a whoa, minus, or plus. It's just an oof. I mean, I've had these for a long time. Issue number five. Yes. I think, let's see. Someone else does this cover, perhaps. Boom, issue number five. And you're like, how come there's a UFO? Don't worry about it. 
Here, take a look in the mirror. <laughs> Chariots of the Stars. Look at that opening page. Look at that. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yep. Yes, indeed. There's Satan. You know, I always pictured Satan pretty jacked. I'm sure he has a gym membership. And, yeah. There's a lot going on. Beowulf, he handles things. He's a handler of things. Here's a Tarzan ad. Tarzan. Tarzan! And pom-poms. I never ate a pom-pom. And nice. Oh, yeah, I want some of those. I want some of those first editions up there. Oh, yeah, baby. Those were the days, man. Oh, wow. I could get a Superman outfit and a Frankenstein monster. So these are the chariots of the, from the stars. Yeah, so they're getting pretty far out, man. They're getting pretty far out. And kaboom. So that's issue number five. Now we're coming up to our last issue of Beowulf the Dragon Slayer. Boom. Just got it in the mail. And he fights the Minotaur. All right. I think this one, he goes through a maze with Nan Z trying to get to Satan. And um, the, the, uh, pens, the pencils inside are done by Rick Estrada. And uh, Dracula is in here and all that stuff. So. But uh, this cover's by uh, Villamonte. Nice. The Minotaur has the same kind of head as Beowulf's helmet. Who'd have thunk? This is in pretty dang good shape. Six bucks. And Rick Estrada on the art. Yes, indeed. The sea was angry, my friend. Ah, ooh, nice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He was never a strong swimmer, you know? And what's happening here? Oh, uh-oh. They're making smoochy smoochy. He's like, you all right? She's like, yeah, how are you? Hey. You know, all through all those waves, that helmet never came off. That's a heck of a helmet. Here is Shazam, the cupcake caper. All right, Shazam. Look at that. Captain Marvel, cupcakes. Legendary letters, the letter page. No? All right. Okay, here's Satan getting angry on his throne, yelling at Dracula. You're not, you're, you bring Dracula name into the dirt. Back in my day, Dracula's were something to be feared. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There's dissension down in hell. Okay. Okay, now. They're going through a maze, yes. All right, and the Min Minotaur's uh, chasing them. All right. And then, okay, they're fighting the Minotaur. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, the Minotaur just, oh, he got him. Okay, but back in hell, Grendel comes up behind Satan and stabs him with a stalactite and kills Satan. All right? Satan goes... Satan goes, the game is over. Who's behind me? Grendel? No! And he gets stabbed. All right? Grendel killed Satan. And, yeah, he kills him. Bam. All right? Now... They make it, then the Minotaur dies once he kills Satan. And then they make it to the thing, and uh, Beowulf eats the apple, and he's like, bing, bing, bing. He's like, I'm healed. He's like, yes. He's like, you want to hang out, baby? And that's it. Issue number six. Pick up sticks. I got the whole series down. I completed a run. Let's party. Guys, awesome. I love completing runs, man. I love completing runs. 
Yes, it is time to rock and roll. I'm feeling good. It's time. All right. <laughs> Comic books bring a smile to my face. They make me smile all over the place. End of the day and it's time to rest. You'll find me reading in the hawk's nest. Second alarm and Harvey's too is where I buy them. How about you? Loving these stories, loving this art. Reading these comics done made me smart. Easy comic reader. Oh, yeah, we got to get some concert t-shirts made up, man. Guys, read your comics. They make you smart. <laughs>